Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a champion guide for Lord Shazar, so let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, let's go ahead and pull up the index, go down to Demon Spawn, and Lord Shazar is the legendary in the top middle position, the Spirit Affinity Attack Champion, and... All right, so first of all, as always, for my champion guides down in the vid description, I will have a link to this infographic here that kind of shows that he requires 10 legendary books and the grades for all the different areas, campaign, clan, boss, all that type of stuff, stat, priority, spot, you know, optimal sets, and the masteries that I currently use on the champion I am showing in this video. As always, a quick reminder to never just blindly copy masteries. You want to make sure and read them and kind of build the champion on your own. Just use that as kind of a guiding light or kind of starting point to get you going. So let's put that away and dive into the kit here. All right, uh, base speed of 101, pretty solid. Anytime we can get over 100, that's a pretty good base speed. We've got an A1 that attacks one enemy three times. Damage increases by 15% for each debuff on the target. Now, one notable thing about this is it's a melee three hitter that is super slow in terms of animation. So uh, it, putting this guy in like speed farming setups it can be really painful when he runs forward and goes... Woof, woof. I, like it, it's very painful <laughs> it, it, it's one of the worst animations in terms of how long it takes uh just to kind of you know go through from start to finish being a melee three hitter that's super slow it kind of checks all the boxes in terms of taking a long time so uh definitely an interesting note on his a1 there uh the a2 is place a 50 percent increase attack buff on this champion for two turns this buff cannot be removed places a block debuffs buff on this champion for two turns and grants an extra turn so kind of cool because uh you know bombs scale with attack and i'll dive into bombs more when i get into his other ability but he's got a, a nice opportunity to do some self buffing and be less reliant on supports and it grants an extra turn so you don't lose anything for doing that then the A3 is going to be an AoE that we can get to a five turn cooldown with books. Has a 75% chance that we can book up to 100, which is very important. Books are very impactful on Lord Shazar. And uh, so basically, a 100% chance, if booked, of placing two bomb debuffs that detonate after two turns decreases the detonation countdown by one turn if this attack is critical. So crit rate going to be pretty important on 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 him because we can get those to be a one turn so it's going to be a 100 percent chance of placing two bomb debuffs that detonate after one turn uh that that's really solid so if you can get five books to land on this cruel fate a3 that's going to be an insane ability for for areas like the arena you place those bombs then in one turn they just blow up super hard and just completely wipe the map clean so uh this, this cruel fate is very good and, and while i'm on the subject of bombs it's very important to kind of talk about how they work uh if you're a newer player you might not understand exactly how the bomb debuff works so it's going to scale with the attack rating of the champion and it cannot crit uh, so, so getting crit damage is kind of worthless for bombs, and they also ignore defense. So uh, going to be very, very good versus champions that have super high defense. You ignore all that defense and just blow up their low HP value. So that's kind of the, the, the role that bombs have in the game is they take longer to inflict the damage, but when they do, it's super impactful and it ignores defense, and it's, it's going to scale only with attack so so bombs can't crit you don't want to like stack crit damage to get your bombs to hit harder it's just based off of their attack rating so it's kind of one of the rare opportunities in the game that you'll see damage dealers wear attack percent gloves uh in, instead of like crit damage or crit rate gloves because you want to get that attack score to be as high as possible to get the bombs to blow up as hard as possible he also has the best arena speed aura in the game at 32%. Uh, you, you know, you've got other champions with good speed auras like the Sandra and Arbiter, uh, uh, Jingle Hunter, Skull Crown. But in terms of arena speed, Shazar has a 32%, which is number one in the game by 2%. So definitely super, uh, you know, ally or uh, speed in the arena is one of the best auras in the game. We're always looking for speed in the arena and Lord Lord Shazar has the number one arena speed aura in Rachel Legends, so definitely worth noting his aura and making sure to point that out. 
So yeah, let's let's back out of here and go pull up my Lord Shazar here, and he's gonna be down here, Spirit Affinity. Okay, so this is how I did mine. Uh, wanted to get in with really good speed and really good accuracy. I'll pull up the total stats and kind of walk you through it. Um, now <laughs> he does need 100% crit rate because remember, with that cruel fate ability, we want to uh, we we want to place the bombs and then we want him to crit. Because it's going to lower the cooldown or the, uh, the the detonation period from two turns to one turn. So very important in the arena. Turns are a big deal. Sometimes you you, you need to do as much damage as quick as possible, um, especially in, in an attack team setup like Shazar is going to be a part of. We we need to get that crit rate to have those bombs go off as soon as possible in the arena. Time is really of the essence in the arena, so you want those to blow up asap thus that's why you can see me building him with lots of crit i don't know why my champions always end up at 99 it, it drives me nuts uh so i do want to optimize his gear at some point and get him to 100 instead of 99 but that's why i built crit rate even though you heard me kind of talking about how bombs scale and you don't need crit rate to make them hit harder that is why he's going to have the high crit rate even though it doesn't affect the bomb damage it affects the detonation period of the bomb which is super important you can see the 4500 attack remember the bomb scales with his attack damage so getting that very high is going to make the bombs hit super hard um other than that you definitely want to get a ton of accuracy because the, uh, so much of his value as a champion is landing those bombs and getting them to go off for insane amounts of damage so if we're missing bombs we're not getting uh, you know the, the amount of utility out of shazar that we would typically want to be going after so you definitely want to get him in super high accuracy i got him you know up over 300 to make sure up in gold four i'm landing those bombs basically every time so then as we dive into masteries uh, that kind of segues me into explaining why I went for the Eagle Eye Tier 6 Mastery because it gives me 50 accuracy, which is a pretty big boost and helps me land those bombs very consistently. Plus, remember how bombs scale, it's off of attack, and we don't need crit damage or anything. So, Eagle Eye seems like a pretty optimal route to go. And uh, worth noting, we don't really get anything out of Sniper if you have him booked, because if you have him booked, the Cruel Fate is going to be a 100% chance anyway because it'll be the 75 plus the 25 on the two levels of debuff chance here but the, I, I wanted to get to eagle eye and neither of these uh are going to help sniper or master hexer but i went with sniper so the infographic is a little bit more accurate because if you don't have him booked then sniper is going to be very impactful because you can take that percent chance from 75 to 80 so you would want sniper if you don't have him booked and uh, you know, even if you do have him booked, then Sniper doesn't help you. Uh, there's really nothing to gain here on your way to Eagle Eye. So just a quick kind of note there on the bottom right in terms of the masteries and kind of why they look the way they do. The other ones are pretty kind of self-explanatory. Uh, you know, uh, increased damage by 8%. All this stuff's good in the arena. You want the crit rate, crit rate on him. And uh, th that template will be there. I'll leave it up here for a couple seconds if you want to be able to pause and kind of you know go over the masteries on your own champion. So yeah, let's back out of here and kind of show him in action in a couple different areas. Um, just for fun, I, I like to show the champion kind of soloing the campaign as a farmer so people can get an idea uh, of what the champion is capable of and how they kind of perform and all that. So here you'll see the A1. One, two. Oh, but he, but he killed them. One, two. Okay, so yeah. So typically if they stay alive, that's the painful animation I was talking about. He runs forward and does the three attacks, and it's just an animation that takes forever. It's super slow. There you get to see it. But, yeah, he can do the campaign in about 25 seconds. He's obviously not going to be a super god-tier XP farmer and do it in, you know, seven or eight seconds or anything. But he is capable. You can see he's a 25-second campaign farmer, as most damage characters are going to be. Somewhere between, you know, seven seconds and 30 seconds. So he slides right into there, and, and you get his chance to kind of see him soloing, you know, brutal content. But you're you're probably not going to be using him as an XP farmer. You're going to want someone like Bellower or, or, or some champion like that. There's rares that can farm the campaign better than him. But I do like to kind of just showcase it. And now let's dive in to the fun part with Shazar, which is the arena. So as we dive into the arena here, um, Shazar is, is kind of cool because... He can be really devastating even as a defense champion, like if you put him in your arena defense, because you can kind of build a super tanky squad that just kind of uh, uses Shazar as the only source of damage. That's how hard the bombs can hit. You can use them as kind of a DPS carry for a group. And when you're looking for teams to go against, 
you can, you can see this team here with Skullcrown, Rosin, Tyrell, and Valkyrie. I know that Rosin, Tyrell, and Valkyrie are all high defense champions. They scale with defense, so my opponent is probably stacking a lot of defense on them. They're going to, you know, most likely have low HP because of that. So, Lord Shazar is going to be amazing versus a team like this because the bombs are going to place on the champions and then blow up. They have low HP pools, so the odds of completely decimating them is pretty high. And, uh, you know, remember, he has the best speed aura in the game for the arena. So even if you are using him with someone like Arbiter, how I am here, you're going to want to make sure Shazar is the lead. As I dive into the thought process behind my team here, um, I do want to make sure and note that my Arbiter has my best speed speed gear on, and I don't want to rip her apart. I actually have a Lysandra, and Lysandra would be better in this team if I got Lysandra to have the same speed as my Arbiter, like 315 or whatever. I would much rather use her, but I don't want to rip apart my Arbiter because she's so generally useful in the arena, and if I ever, you know, take Shazar, Shazar out... Or want to do something else. I don't want to rip apart my Arbiter, but I do want to build a Lysandra that can get up there over 300 speed, and, and then she would actually slot in better than Arbiter in this space, because my Shazar does not need to get his attack buffed, which is, which is a lot of the utility that Arbiter would bring here. Remember, he can buff himself and do that 50% increase attack buff. So the general thought process is here. Arbiter is going to boost turn meters, help me go before my opponents. I use Shazar as the Arbiter, or as the Aura, because it's 2% better than Arbiter's. Then Torment is there for the clutch, suppression, and freezes, and all that. And, uh, you know, Sir Nicholas is just a very generally useful champion to place shields on my team, help me absorb, make sure those bombs are going to go off, make sure I can live long enough, and he can also be a solid damage dealer. So, like I said, this team being high defense, they're going to get just absolutely smoked by the Shazar bombs. You can see here if I go into the battle, and if I put it on auto, she's going to boost. Then Tormund's going to go have a little bit of suppression, and then my uh, Sir Nick is going to go, and my Shazar is going to come through and place a bunch of bombs. There we go. And now uh, you can see that when, when she was going to go, the bomb blew up. Then when, when they were going to go, the bombs blew up. You can see that they're just falling over when it's their turn because the bombs are going off. I'll show you a couple more here just on auto and kind of show you what it looks like here as I'm farming the arena. Let's do, this is another high defense team here right here. So this is where Shazar would be very good. And you can just watch how you can just auto it. Boom. And we can just kind of blow through the arena with Shazar. That martyr is going to get destroyed. And boom, there it is. So yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting because they just kind of fall over when it's their turn. But versus the Magic Champions, uh, you know, that is worth noting. This was a good kind of battle to see. You really have to be careful with Shazar because against Magic Champions, which are very common, he's going to really struggle to place those bombs. So do be wary of that when you're fighting in the arena with him. You, you, you are going to struggle to land those bombs consistently against Magic Champions. Uh, so, yeah, that's one we would have a little bit of trouble with there with Shazar. Um, that's lots of Magic there. And uh, you know, torment teams are 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 tough to do with a with an arbiter booster type team. Uh, but this is one that we can probably pull off here. Oh, look at all those bombs! That's gonna hurt. And arbiter falls over, and rosin falls over. So uh, that's kind of like the thought process be be behind a typical. Uh, you know, team built around Shazar and, and what the thought process is when you're fighting in the arena and kind of going through just speed farming in goal four, which I think is the most optimal route to manage your account right now, unless you have like Siffy and Rotos and some god to your roster and you want to spend all sorts of gems and refills to get up into platinum, which I don't really think is worth it right now. I think the most optimal route to progress your great haul over time is to speed farm in gold four with like a 95 to 90, 90% win rate. If you're an end game player and just kind of build teams around doing that with a high quality of life, auto friendly, fast, able to chew through your arena matches every day is kind of an optimal route to go. And Lord Shazar can be very good in that role. 
So let's go back into Shazar and, and just go. I, I know some of you may be curious to see the gear and, and the thought process. I think by now, at this point in the video, you kind of know the thought process in terms of the gear. You're going to want an accuracy banner. And then we need good crit rate, accuracy, and attack on our gear. So I'll show you this stuff uh, there, accuracy and speed. Uh, we, we wish that it had attack percent on it. That would be ideal, but we, we didn't have that there. Uh, one of the rare cases that you want a flat attack annual because remember he's a damage dealer but we don't need crit damage on him so we can go flat attack make those bombs scale even harder so one of the very few cases in the game where you want a flat attack amulet and then we want to make sure and get accuracy on it as well the ring is going to be attack and kind of a good stat stick for us that has high attack with defense and hp then the boots are typically going to be speed if you're using them in the arena you could put him in attack percent boots in the right setup uh especially if you're gonna if you're gonna build a defensive team that kind of absorbs everything and helps everything survive he can hit and those bombs are going to hit insanely hard if you put him in attack percent boots i went with speed just to make sure i'm able to go before the other team and kind of speed farm gold four attack percent pretty obvious on the chest and again, similar to the amulet, this is one of those rare exceptions where the gearing is a little bit different. Uh, attack percent gloves are very, very good on him. And if you can get speed and crit rate and accuracy substats, that would be super optimal. Uh, these gloves could definitely be improved, but they were divine speed to pair with my weapon and they did have the 12% crit rate. So I was able to put them on now, but those aren't like super perfect or anything. And then the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. You're looking for speed, crit rate, accuracy, and attack. So yeah, this weapon was so insane for Lord Shazar that I wanted to pair something with divine speed with him. And that's why the gloves are here because this weapon is just too intense for, uh, you know, the crit damage could be something different like accuracy, but uh, but that weapon is just insane with the 19% attack and the 17 speed and the crit rate with the six star attack roll. Now, in terms of the booking process for Lord Shazar, uh, mine actually went perfect. Uh, I had no books go on the A1, and I was able to max out the A2 and the A3. So if you were going to book Lord Shazar, this is... I wonder why half the time I say Shazar and half the time I say Shazar. Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, it's just kind of weird how my brain works. I, I literally say both of them half the time, but by now, if you're a sub to my channel, you know about the drill when it comes to me pronouncing things. So I guess I'll just say whichever one kind of comes into my brain. But but yeah, you, you don't really want books for the A1. If you've got a bunch of debuffs on the target, it can actually hit decently hard, but I, I don't think it's worth spending four legendary books to get his A1 to hit a little bit harder. Uh, but the books are very impactful on the A2, and they are most impactful on the A3 because... So so much of his utility is in those bombs landing consistently so the books are super impactful to take that not only from 75 to 100 percent but also lowering the cooldown and it's a long cooldown so that, that that's pretty impactful as well so yeah my my character here my shazar is booked pretty perfectly and this is kind of the goal when it comes to booking him is to avoid the a1 and get the a2 and the a3 to kind of get maxed out so now let's go into the reviews and kind of grade him here. Uh, so they recommend crit rate and offense. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's very important to scale his crit rate and attack to uh, lower the cooldown of the bombs, detonating, and also getting them to scale very well. So that's a good job. And they, they, they always use basic sets for these recommendations. You're not going to see like divine speed or anything. So that's pretty good in terms of the in-game recommendations. Arena, we're going to give him a five on both parts there, obviously. He's very, very solid in the arena. Campaign four he's i mean he's all right uh fire knight he does have the three hit a1 with the self buffing and the, and the placing of bombs it's only gonna work with the shields down i'll give him a four clan boss and no he's not that great uh, he does have a three hit a1 with some self buffing um but no he's he, he's not super good in the clan boss spider den no you're not gonna want him there uh Mino, he's fine he could be he could he could, be, he could do some good uh work there dragon um yeah sure he'd be a good dps or there force he's amazing uh the bombs ignore defense the force keep boss uh has notoriously high defense so he's be he'd be and he's spirit affinity which will counter the force keep so he's amazing in the force keep um ice golem he's gonna get blown up in wave two by the reflect damage so um i'll give him a four 
Void, he's fine. He's gonna be fine in, in these keeps. Uh, the Spirit Keep, he doesn't have any super utility, but he'll hit really hard. I'll give him a four. Uh, Magic Keep, he's affinity countered, so uh, it's gonna be tough to get stuff to land consistently. Faction Wars, he's gonna be fine. He's legendary with, with good base speed, good base stats, and he can be a DPS carry for your team, so we'll give him a five there. And yeah, that's going to kind of do it for this video, touching on Lord Shazar and kind of showcasing him in the arena in a bomb squad, kind of farming through and, and grading him and all that. Remember, I do have that infographic down in the description if you want to pull that up and be able to take a look at kind of what we went over in this video. That infographic is down there. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.